Hey guys, Professor Tomney here, and before we get started on today's topic, I just wanted to mention the calibration curve guide is available under free resources on my website. So I'll give a little more detail about that at the end of this video, so stay tuned, but you will be able to download a free guide that walks you through how to make a standard calibration curve, and I am now starting to offer some free resources on my website. So stay tuned, at the end of the video we'll discuss that. Let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. This is Professor Tomney here, and today I want to take a look at how to make a standard curve. So the reason this came up or I thought of this is while I was at work, there's a lot of people that I work with that we constantly need to make standard curves. And many times they will come and ask me questions about calibration curves, how to make standards, dilutions. And it's an essential skill. You want to get used to being able to create good quality uh, standard curves or what's called a calibration curve. And that's what we're going to discuss today. This very often comes up even in high school chemistry uh, or at the latest by early general chemistry because it is an essential skill when you get into any type of workplace if you're constantly handling samples, uh, especially if they have unknown concentrations or things like that. So what exactly is a standard curve? First of all, standard curves are not curves. They are very often linear in their nature when you start lining up the points. So you can see an example, a generalized example here, uh, where we've got a standard curve of some compound X, and what you see is there are points plotted in a linear type of fashion, and then there's a line of best fit that has gone through those points. So what has essentially happened is that we take the concentration of compound X and we make our own set of standards with it. So we say, all right, I'm going to make one at 2 milligrams per milliliter, 20 milligrams per milliliter, 40 milligrams per milliliter, etc. And then I'm going to test it against something else. And that something else in this case is absorbance. So maybe we've got something like uh, UV Viz that we're using to measure the uh, absorbance of light through that solution. And that's directly proportional to the concentration using Beer's law. Now, in terms of when you would use this, it's primarily anytime you have a large number of unknown samples and you need to determine the concentration of those samples. Um, you obviously need to have a idea of what's going to be in the unknown samples so that you can adequately create a known set of standards in order to make this uh, standard curve. Now it comes with a slope equation. So once you've generated this correlation here, you're going to get a slope equation, which is right up here. Okay, and we'll take a look at that in more detail in a few minutes. And then you are also going to have your R squared value. Now your R squared value, this is a value that a lot of students always try to get as close to one as possible which is a good thing. There's technically no such thing as an R squared of one. That would be an absolute perfect correlation where the variance of each variable perfectly explains the variance of the other variable. Um, so you can get very close, especially in the hard sciences, to almost one. However, usually it's going to be a 0.99 something or even a little bit lower, 0.98, something like that. If you start getting too low, below 0.95, uh, you probably want to reevaluate your data set and attempt to do it again, particularly, again, in the hard sciences. When you get to things like social sciences, nutritional science, there's a lot of what's called covariance or uh, cofactors, uh, covariables, that can affect one another. So an example of that would be, okay, if I turn around and I say that sugar uh, has a correlation with obesity, which your sugar intake and obesity should be somewhat correlated, 
uh, that's not going to have necessarily a 95% or above um, when we're talking about R squared. And that's because there's a lot of underlying factors. It could be looking at how much sleep you have, your alcohol consumption, your smoking, whether you exercise or not, your other dietary choices, the amount of stress in your life. You can see there's a lot of things that compound that. And so the idea that your sugar intake could explain 99% of the variance seen in the population due to obesity, uh, that's a bit of a stretch, right? So anyway, back to the uh, chemistry side of this. When you get this slope equation, the slope equation can be utilized in order to then find the unknown concentrations. So if we look at a slope equation, your slope equation is basically going to be a calculator where you have y and x, right? So this is a general slope equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept, and then you have your y and your x variables. So in this case, you look at the y-axis, you would have absorbance, so that would be absorbance here, okay? And then on the x-axis, you have the concentration, so that would be concentration. And we are going to look at how to do this in like an Excel, Google Sheets type of manner uh, in a few minutes. So what you can do here is once you have this equation, let's say that I have an unknown sample. I can take the unknown sample. I can get the absorbance by putting it into the spectrophotometer. And once I get that absorbance value, I can plug the absorbance value in here. And then I can mathematically solve for concentration, right, by algebraically rearranging that equation so that I solve for x. So in the case above, you can see this here, the equation, uh, what, which was this top part right here, okay, is going to be, so the y variable would be absorbance, okay, so I would write absorbance is equal to and then it's the slope is 0 0.0123 x okay and for x we should actually go ahead and write concentration and then it says plus and it's 0.97 e minus 3. so when you have something like that what that's telling you is it's point zero zero nine seven okay because that's 10 to the negative third uh, when it states that so this would be the slope equation so if I had absorbance I could plug it in here and then all I would have to do is algebraically rearrange this all right now a couple of important points when you're doing this you need to have reliable standards. So when I'm getting ready to plot these points and, and make my standards at different concentrations, they need to be from a very reliable source. So you need to make sure when you're ordering, you're ordering from a source where you know you're getting pure standard. And if you are doing the dilutions or you have a tech doing the dilutions, you need to know that that person knows what they're doing and they're doing correct dilutions, right? Now, we can have a whole nother lecture on how to do proper dilutions within itself, but the next point here is very important. Repeatable and accurate dilutions must be performed. So when you are going through and you're creating these standards, you need to make sure that you are doing your dilutions properly, and you should also be able to repeat it. You should be able to create those dilutions again. That's just very basic scientific, uh, you know, protocol there. Um, when you do your dilutions, it is ideal to create a single stock solution, and then you're going to pull from that and make additional dilutions, right? Now, your unknown values, this is very important, should fall within 10% of the range of the curve, all right? So, for instance, if we come and we take a look at the curve that I have up here, all right, I am going from, here's concentration, 0 to about 80, okay, in milligrams per milliliter. 
So that means when I get the absorbance of some unknown and then I plug it in here and I find out what the value should be in terms of concentration, it should not go above 80 plus or minus 10 percent. All right, so 10 percent of 80 would be 8. So if I'm getting above 88 milligrams per milliliter, the concentration is too high in that unknown, which is fine. What I would need to do is dilute that unknown to bring its value back down into the range of the calibration curve. And then I can back calculate in order to find out what the actual concentration was, right? So I could take what I have, cut the concentration in half. Hopefully I should be getting close to about 40 milligrams per milliliter then. And if that's the case, that falls within the range. And then all I would have to do is multiply by two, if I cut it in half, in order to bring it back up to the proper concentration that that unknown had. So when you get your absorbance value, you plug it in, the value needs to initially fall within the range of that calibration curve. If it doesn't, you should dilute it and then keep track of your dilution factors so you can multiply it back out once you're done. Okay, it's important to stick with that uh, range once you have it. All right, so those are the main points. Let's go ahead and switch over here. Uh, and we are going to take a look at how to actually do this. So here is the spreadsheet, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this right here. And let's just say that this is the data set that you're working with. Okay, so here is the spreadsheet. We're doing this in Google Docs, and it would be similar if you're doing it in something like Excel. So what we're going to do now is imagine that this is the data. So you have absorbance and concentration. You made your dilutions in the lab. You put your samples in a spectrophotometer and got these absorbance readings. You're ready to make your standard curve. So what you're going to do, you go up to insert, and then you want to pick out chart. Now, the first chart that comes up here, okay, you can see is going to be column chart. So we don't want a column chart. You want to pick out the scatter plot. And the scatter plot is the one we're going to go with here. All right, now, when you're doing this, you're going to want to select the data range here. And for the data range, you can highlight what you want. So you're gonna pick out absorbance as one data range, pick all those values, all right? And then once you have that, comma, and then your next set right here, okay? So it should be Okay. All right. So the way that you wanted to do that, you have A2 through A7 as those data cells and then comma, and then you want the next set that's there. Okay. You don't want them as two separate data ranges. They come together. So then you want to combine this. So after you have that, you are going to use the X axis and make sure you have the correct set that you want there. And then you also can edit what goes on the other axis. So for this, when you are creating a standard curve, you want to have your independent variable on your X axis. So what that means is the variable that you control that is independent of the outcome, all right? So in that case, this is concentration is what we're looking at. So concentration is the independent variable. It is the one that the chemist or the researcher can control themselves. So right now, that is not on the x-axis. It looks like absorbance is currently there. So what we are going to do is go ahead and edit this, and we want this to be B2 through B7. Okay. So you can see that axis is switched there. Now I need to do the same thing for the Y, which is down here at series. So we're going to edit and make that A2 and A7. Okay, 
So then we've switched here, right? Now the absorbance is going along the Y axis, and then you come along here and you've got your concentration, okay? So independent variable, the one that you control, the one that you can edit. So you could potentially control the different concentrations. You cannot control the absorbance readings that the spectrophotometer is giving you, all right? So once you have that set up, you should be go good to go ahead and go over to customize. So when you see it says set up here, go to customize. All right, now there's a lot of different options. The first one I would suggest that you come to is chart, axis, and titles. So most instructors are going to insist that you have a title, so your chart title. A lot of people like to put, uh, you know, the X variable versus the Y variable. You can do that. Um, I prefer to give it a bit of a more detailed name. So we don't know what this compound is, but we'll just say compound X, right? That was what we used in the example. So we will say standard curve or calibration curve for compound X, right? It just gives slight, little bit more detail than absorbance versus concentration. That doesn't tell you, at least if you're going to put that, put absorbance versus concentration for compound X, right? Or whatever that compound might be. So here I'm just changing, you know, bold. You can change the text color. You can change the size. We're going to probably want a larger size for our title. And you can change the centering so it's, you know, centered there. So there you go. You've got a title. Now it is absolutely essential that your axes are labeled. So horizontal, right, which would be the X and the vertical. So right here, we'll go ahead and give it a title and we'll say uh, concentration of X. And then you want to put your units after that. So let's just say milligrams per milliliter. All right, you would be keeping track of whatever that is when you're doing that. So again, I'm going to make it bold. We're going to make dark and then we'll increase the size so our readers could see that. And then we'll do the same thing for the vertical, right? So this is going to be the absorbance. Bold. Dark text. Larger. So there you go. All right, now we have a properly labeled standard curve. And something else I just want to mention here, um, if you have a general idea or you know where the concentrations tend to cluster, you want to try to make the spread of your standard curve to fit those concentrations. So this is kind of reverse engineering the point that your data, the unknown data points have to fit the calibration curve that we talked about a few minutes ago. The same thing is true. Let's say that I expect all of my values to fall between 0 and 20 milligrams per milliliter. Then this would be excessive to take it all the way out to 80. I should pick out more points between 0 and let's say 25 and create a spread that would go along there. Okay? So you want to make one that adequately captures. You don't want basically all of your points to be clustered down in the bottom left quadrant of your calibration curve and then none of this space up here is ever being utilized you want a good spread when you're working with that all right so that takes care of the different titles so we'll go back with that and then uh probably where students have the most question is how do i get the equation and the trend line so for that you want to head into series right here Okay, and you will end up with these check boxes down at the bottom here. And one of them says trend line. So click trend line and that'll add your line of best fit. Your points ideally should be very close to or should be hugging that line of best fit. Now, again, having a true connect the dot scenario is not what you're looking for. That's, you know, just m matching the dots. It's literally connecting the dots. What we're looking for here is the line of best fit or the trend line. That is the line that passes through the data points with the minimal distance between all points to the line. So it's minimizing the error. Now, as you're doing this, okay, uh, once you click trend line, you're going to get a whole bunch of other material that comes up here. You're going to see a box that says show R squared. So you can show your R squared. 
And then you'll also have something that says right here, okay, label. You can do a custom label, right? But what we're going to want to do is use equation show r squared. So when you use use equation, here you go. Okay, and we can again make this darker so the audience could see it. Make it a little bit larger and bold. And there you go. All right, so this is your slope equation. Uh, and it is your y equals, here's m, the point 0, 1, 2, 3, the x, and then the uh, intercept. So that's how you would generate a standard curve using this. Now, uh, just to wrap things up here, if you are interested in getting a free guide on creating calibration curves based on what we did, come to the website and I have put up a free resources link over on chemcomplete.com. So I will have the link to this down in the description. I will also try to post a card or something like that in the video at some point that you could click on. But come and click on free resources. And when you click on free resources, the first one right here is a free standard curve calibration guide. You click on this. This is completely free. You just open it up and it'll have step-by-step -step instructions going over everything that we just did so that you could see how to create your calibration curve. All right, with an example of how to solve it. We talk about R squared a little bit in there, but this is a nice little three page guide I'm offering for free uh, in support of the channel. And you can come over and download it free of cost at chemcomplete.com. So other than that, be sure if you stop by our website to check out some of the other services, we now offer full guides. Uh, they're like entire chapters from books that I have written. And we have one for solving unknown organic spectroscopy, naming alkanes. Uh, those are some of the courses that are coming out for free. We have the about section. And then we also have services. You can hire me online for one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh, if you would like. And you're always able to contact us through there. So other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Remember to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe. Uh, click the little bell notification if you want to know anytime new content is coming out. And just check out the description for other things going on with the channel. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks for learning with us and have a fantastic rest of your day.